Hey, what's going on now? I'm in the crib here. I'm cut this TV down so people can hear what I'm saying. Cause a lot of people, a lot of people say they can't hear what I'm saying. A lot of people talking about, oh, he he stay in mom crib and all this. Look, this is my crib. All right, I'm in Atlanta. And look, when I do my videos, my videos is just basically my opinion. All right, my dialect or my ebonics, if you will, or whatever you want to call it, my slang. It's just basically how we, how I do it on my video, and basically how we do it here in the South. Of you from a Southern state, all right. A lot of somebody left me a comment about me using the N word a lot in my videos. Um, I mean, it's just a figure of speech to a certain extent, if you will, all right. Um, we took that name that's negative and turn it into a positive, which is a form of endearment to people that we know. I mean, we can relate to that word. Uh, it's not derogatory. I mean, if you if we take the dictionary version of the word nigger, a nigga, how we say it, or any version of it, or how you would spell it, is the definition of being stupid and so on, non-educated, things of that nature. Someone that, and when you look at somebody and you say, well, that's a stupid person, that's something, you can say that. But I don't care about the definition the book definition of the word nigger, uh, we know that that word has a powerful meaning from slavery, uh, from when our descendants was brought over here on slave ships to the United States and its presence in today's time. It's not said loudly and verbally in today's times, but it's said in subtle ways. All right. Everything that Donald Trump get up there and say that he want to have the African American vote, and 90% of African Americans going to vote for him in his four after his four years or what? Look, <laughs> but if you look at that, and you put the 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 N I G G E R version on everything he say, N word, your schools are poor. N word, you don't have no jobs. N word, you're going to vote for me. N word, what you got to lose? N word. If you say it like that, then what's the difference from the white masters that were saying it back in the slavery days? So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the N word. A lot of people, I heard somebody left me a comment talking about I'm, in, I'm not in my own career. You see me in my own career, man. Quit playing. All right? You see me here. All right. And you see me talking about my videos, the videos that I do, they're just personal videos. All right. Um, people subscribe to this channel and that's that's fine. Um, but I'm looking to do something a little bit bigger than just do a FaceTime type video. I mean, this initiated from the so-called Black Lives Matter movement, for which, again, just this past weekend. And this let's date this video. This video is dated August the 23rd. Uh, 2016. Now, the past weekend, you had violence in Chicago in the inner cities. Four died and some more other people was injured. Uh, Black Lives Matter. Where are where are you, man? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about seriously. Now, I haven't said the N word in this video. I haven't really cussed in this video. I'm trying to be civilized here. All right? I'm trying to do. Let me just do one video. Where I can just be civilized and just ask genuine questions here. Black Lives Matter. Are y'all going to really come out for us that's out here still in the field, if you will? And, and that's a figure of speech for people that think I'm literally talking in the field. Damn. But figuratively speaking, I know why I stand in, this, in the United States of America. I'm still a quote unquote slave in 2016 and beyond out here in the field picking cotton, if you will. I haven't made it to the master house like NBA players, football players. Players, people got money, actors, black actors. Well, I haven't made it to the high Oprah Winfrey, Michael Jordan, all those token folks that has made it into the, you know, how can I say it? That has been accepted by whites and their popularity, their status has turned their skin color off to whites where they, they don't even recognize their skin color. All they see is just, oh, okay. maybe they do. I mean, let's, let's not be naive, okay? Because you got new nig Negroes out there. And a new Negro is basically a black person 
that either grew up in the hood and don't change or never grew up in the inner city and got him a Mercedes Benz, got him a nice job, him or her, if you will. And they can't relate to hood or inner city issues or just general black issues for that matter. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not a new Negro. I, I grew up in the inner cities here in Atlanta. I grew up in the shelters here in Atlanta. I know how I feel to be poor in the city of Atlanta. So I don't need to go to Chicago, Illinois to, and to relate to people. I know how it is. I mean, I know specifically the details, but I know if we say, if we keep talking, keep talking, we're going to have some, we're going to connect with that. That's right. You said some real shit right there. I can agree with that because I dealt with that. So I know when you talk to real people that been through something, you're going to have that, re that relation uh, that you can correlate with somebody with. And that's what it's about. Now, if I ever get money, that don't mean I'm going to change and turn a blind eye to what goes in the hood. Cause I, that's real down there. That's that's real. If you survive that, you, you, you don't need a hero cookie. Now I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that's real. Now it's two ways to look at that. Cause a lot of people get this mindset of I'm in the hood. I gotta keep it real. I gotta get tattoos, scarred up, bandana up, all that mess. Cause I'm in the hood. I gotta keep it real. Look, man, I'm real, bro. I've been in the hood. <laughs> I. You don't see nail tattoo, nothing. I don't need that mess on me, bro. I don't need none of that. I don't need to. I don't need to fall into that ideology or, or, or mentality that you not hood if you don't participate in hood shit. If you don't walk around with your pants sagging. If you don't know how to speak ebonics and dialect and hood dialect and street talk, but also know how to speak proper and correct English. You should be able to do both. You should not just be one-sided. And that's what I'm trying to get people to understand. Now, you can be a new Negro if you want to be a new Negro. I don't care. Do what you want to do. All right? You got one life to live. Do what you want to do. All right? But what I'm saying is, as an African-American, male and female, we have to realize that we have to think a little deeper and beyond the box is what I'm saying on things that we do and things that we see going on in, in this world. And that's what I'm trying to get people to realize is if we can start to think outside of the box and realize that, you know, hey, when we see nonsense go on, we need to speak on it. We need to be verbal about it. Don't just get on social media and say, oh, man, that's messed up. Oh, oh. no, we need a little bit more than that. Because if Martin Luther King Jr. would have just said, oh, you know, well, that's messed up, Coretta. If he would have just said that and kept going, you know, all the, especially the leaders here in Atlanta. Atlanta is rich with leaders from Hosea Williams, Ralph David Afnathy, Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Andrew Young, uh, uh, Congressman, can't think of his name right now, John Lewis. I mean, I can go on and on. And I just want people to realize that, look, man, we got to take a stand. Because Black Lives Matter is not going to do it. I mean, we see now that even even uh, the, the guy over there in the Philippines got on his station asking, why is it the United States is allowing African Americans to be killed in the streets over here? For which the United States haven't came back with a reply. Why is that? Because other countries is looking. And see what they fail to realize after a while. You're going to have other countries sign with African-Americans over here. So if we ever go to a World War III, then you put yourself in a real serious situation. I'm talking the United States. Because all they're seeing is African-Americans being treated less than, along with other Amer Americans, Muslim, Native Americans, especially uh, Latino, Puerto Ricans, uh, etc., all being treated less than. But all they see is African Americans male shot 16 times like the guy walking down the street. And he walking down the street, he had a knife and you shoot him 16 times. I'm trying to figure that out, man. I mean, it's just certain things I just, I just can't figure out. I really can't. And then the, the guy that was deaf, this is breaking news, the guy that was deaf, Got out of his car. He, he was doing some sign language, at least trying to sign, let him know. And he ended up getting killed. 
but a guy can stab two people and eat on eat, eating people and y'all and he talking about all all about all of or whatever the fuck and y'all are y'all able to get him though but see i'm not fool though is what i'm saying because every time i see that right there it lets me know that that article i read where y'all are going to allow that to happen and, and, it, and it's controlled and nothing's going to be done about it. it I kind of feel that. I kind of believe that. Because you can let all, 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 all you can arrest him. But I'm asking myself, is it staged? Is some of this stuff y'all do staged? Because you already signed the executive order that you would do it, which is the sad part. Via uh, genocide or via man-made diseases that y'all do. Either one. I'm just trying to figure out though. I mean, I, you artists, I seen it with my own eyes, and I'm seeing it out here in this world that y'all will do it. But I'm telling, I'm, I'm, and I don't want to just come on here with saying African Americans do what I say. Uh, I'm, the, I ain't saying nothing like that, man. I'm trying to be that voice. I'm trying to be that for this new millennial generation because they caught up in reality TV and dudes walking around with Hello Kitty shirts and all this brainwash shit, and I'm just lost on on that. Because that's not a version of a real man. A real man needs to be strong, a leader, powerful. Not Hello Kitty nigga. Really? Come on, man. Skirts on and shit. Y'all getting caught up in this uh, satanic music of rappers that ain't even had the stuff that they rap about. Don't know they don't do. Even the rappers here in Atlanta. Nigga got seven, eight kids talking about I'm in drug house every day, trapping on the side. You ain't in no house every day, bro. You on reality TV. You got a reality TV show. You got a fake ass restaurant around right down here that you couldn't run. Fuck is this nigga talking about, man? So I don't get caught up in these clown ass rappers unless, like I said, the flesh is weak. So when I'm dealing with the weaker female flesh, then I participate in that satanic bullshit. And then ain't that ain't that fucked up with me? Cause that's that's fucked up. Because even though I'm trying to teach people how to get out of that fuck shit, I find myself falling victim to that dumb shit. But that's the goddamn world we live in. But in that same world, you should be able to know I'm falling victim to that shit. Let me step my ass up out of this motherfucking shit here. Because that's a thirst trap, if you will. And I ain't trying to be a simp nigga. But look, that's some, that's, that's a whole nother video, man. I, I can't tell nobody how they live their life. What I am going to say is as African American male and female, for females, if you have sons and daughters, but sons, what are you telling your sons as you send them off to school, as they stand up and play their allegiance to the flag of the United States of America for whatever reason I don't know, just to be just to for them to grow up later in the years and be walking down the street and then be mowed down by some cops and plant evidence. And whatever the story is fed to the media, that is truth. And, oh, yeah, they're going to seal the autopsy report. They're going to seal the body camera footage. And they're going to edit it and do whatever they got to say to make it seem that your son was the aggressor. What is, your tell what is you telling your son for that scenario that I just gave you? Because if you don't think it's real, if you don't think that's real, then you, ain't, you really ain't paying attention to what's going on since 2012. When we had all these shootings and just every year we had massive just shooting, shooting, shooting of African-American males and females, along with Puerto Rican, Latino males and uh, Hispanic male and women that's not getting reported and other races. But uh, I, I just try to end with a positive note on this one here, because this is just a uh, this is just a video or uh, just addressing the weak issues, really. But again, I asked. For people that fall upon this video, what are you asking? What are you doing, you know, to to prepare yourself? Because we see it ain't gonna change. I mean, they say oh, it's gonna change when Rodney King. It's supposed to change when the civil rights movement. Even now, it's supposed to change. And then you got fake leaders like Black Lives Matter that that want their little 15 minutes of TV fame. And then when we have real issues going on, besides a white officer kills a black male. Besides that, what else y'all going to do? Man, y'all let me know something. Talk to me. All right, that's what I'm saying.